Hello everyone and welcome to my very first Instagram live. So I am coming to you from Bali. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a preview or a view of what I look at. Um, this is my my, I guess it's my my backyard or my front yard, but when I come out to check the surf, this is pretty much what I do, <laughs> is walk a few meters over to the balcony and see what's going on. It's not very exciting today. Um, this is my living room. This is my surfboard quiver. And... Uh, yeah, so pretty much after this, it's morning here. So after this, I'm going to head out and have myself a surf. So I also have to let you know that <laughs> there's a troop of about 100 monkeys that lives in my neighborhood. And so they tend to come by like any time for a little raid. And so I've had to... Be <laughs> like monkey patrol every morning just to see it's like between 6 30 and 7 30 they come and if i jump up i'll show them to you they're pretty funny if you look in my highlights there's a bunch of there's a couple videos of them swimming in our swimming pool so they come along and i don't know if you've ever seen monkeys swim before but they they dive into the water, they fully swim under the water, they push each other in the water. They're really hilarious to watch. So this is gonna be a new and regular thing. I wanted to start doing Instagram Lives and do one at least every couple of weeks where I take my latest video or blog post and go over it with you. So when you get my newsletter, if you're signed up for my list and you get a link to the latest video or blog post, read that. And then if you have questions about it or comments, bring them over to the Instagram Live. So that'll happen the following week. So my posts are going out on Wednesdays now. We're going to call it Well Fucked Wednesdays. And then come on over to the Live. And I'm excited to connect with you. So I'm going to go through the different points that I wrote in this piece last week, The Secrets to My Success. And then we'll pause every couple points and take questions from you guys so the more um, provocative and interesting not not <laughs> I would say provocative like not uh, too seductive but your questions the more fascinating they are the more I'll be likely to answer them so these secrets to my success these ten points are I'd say their philosophies their habits and they're pretty much things I do every day and they're non-negotiable. These are things that I really live by in my life that I've cultivated habits with over the past like 25 years. So the first thing we're gonna start out with is this idea like I don't give a fuck. And you know, this is something I talk about in the realm when you start to really inhabit your sexuality and your sexual energy. And something I often say is that when people are operating at a deficiency, and by the way, I'm so stoked to see you all here. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, you start to really operate at your full potential. And when you aren't tapped into your sexual energy, your life force, creative, orgasmic energy, you're not tapping into your full potential. And when you really get to that place, you embody your true self. And so you're so naturally confident and you don't care anymore what other people think about you. You know what your truth is. You're in tune with your truth. You're much more naturally living your truth. And then you don't care what other people think. So this is a hallmark, I'd say, of my philosophy and of being well fucked and in tune with your sexual energy and it's also a really big point in terms of being a creative person and so for me when I'm working as much as I think of myself as a holistic sexual healer I also think of myself as a creative artist and so all of my all of my work and my inspiration and the things that I put together, I always want them to be artful. I want them to be innovative. I want them to be unique. I get turned on both like creatively and erotically by doing new, interesting, inventive work. That's what really feeds me as well as being of service. And so in my work, I'm always looking for, you know, the new, new ways to express something. That's what really gets me going. And to do that though, you can't give a shit what other people think because if you're always checking to see if it's 
safe to express something, to put it out there, you'll never be a trailblazer. You can be one of the pack, but until you're ready, and this takes courage, you're ready to step out there with a new, bold idea and really put yourself and your concepts out on the line for the world to view, then you know nothing you'll never really get past a certain level and for me I remember like years ago doing I was invited to do this talk at Pachachka it's this amazing if you ever have one in your city it's it looks like Picha Kucha P-E-C-H-A-K-U-C-H-A to pronounce Pachachka and in different cities all over the world they invite creative people to come and talk about their inspirations what you know what are the things that inspire them in their and influence them in their work and so I was invited to do this and I was like, you know, eating calm, <laughs> like, eating calm inspires me. I should put that. And I'm thinking like, am I really, am I going to put this? And I called a friend of mine and we were talking about it and she's like, yeah, just go for it. So I talked about eating calm and uh, being well fucked and whatever. Like I just went for it and the audience fucking loved it. Like they were going bananas, you know, they were just like screaming and howling and laughing and everyone else is going up there and well, I've this piece of architecture is, which is great. I'm inspired by architecture too, but you know, I was a whole curveball in the mix. And later someone reviewed the night and was like, Oh, the highlight of the night was Kiminami speaking about her spiritual and sexual tips. And it was a kind of a gateway for me of like, all right, you know, I'm going to go for it. And even though obviously I've got some provocative ideas, I'm just going to throw them up. Oh my God. I love all these hearts, these exploding hearts. These are amazing. Um, and that was a real turning point for me of just put it out there. And I feel like that's when my whole life and business really quantum leaped is when I was willing to take those risks. So in my view, it's all about courage. Hi, Pamela. Thank you. These exploding hearts. Oh my God. That's like tearing me up. They're so beautiful. <laughs> okay. So next point. I put a huge focus on self-care in my life. So that means that I'm very rigorous about my diet. I exercise pretty much daily and I meditate. And these are sort of my top three non-negotiables. We'll talk about sex later. <laughs> um, uh, and all of these things happen pretty much before lunchtime or before 10 in the morning. Thank you, Illuminated Llama. That's so lovely. Um, so my diet is kind of uh, like it's vegan pretty much. I have the occasional animal supplement like I take collagen, marine collagen, and I take colostrum and I, um, aw, as a woman I love, need to see you doing this with full honesty so I can do it too. It makes it normal for me. Thank you. Um, so. And I'm really, I don't eat, so I eat pretty much 100% organic food. I only know genetically modified food, and I'm a fanatic about this. I don't inflict this pain on other people. Like, <laughs> the people around me, they can eat whatever they want. That's totally their choice. But for me, let's say if I go out to... Um, a restaurant, I go into the kitchen or I talk to the chef and I ask them what oils they use because most people cook with genetically modified oils. Hi Shona. Hey Shona. Tell me what you tell me your favorite word, Shona. So Shona came to my Mexico retreat last year and Shona had to get over saying certain words in her vocabulary. <laughs> tell me, show me the words, Shona. Um so I'm super rigorous about that. These are ha ha. These are my beliefs. And I, colostrum from animals, I believe. So these are my beliefs and I follow them really rigorously. I've been on an organic diet for the last 25 years. And thank you, she just said the C word, the big cunt word, because we, we had to make her say this on the retreat. It's all about liberation, folks, and taking chances and going beyond what you say. Um, I, Okay, so that's huge for me. Lots of fresh fruit, vegetables. I get fresh juices delivered to my house here every morning. Cold pressed, organic juices. There's organic farms on the island in Bali. And so I found a juice place that makes only organic juices. I do my research. I'm very diligent. And I recently just cut out an, an ad actually in my newsletter asking for a private chef to come and cook for me in Bali. So we had, I, I was astounded to be honest at all the amazing responses that we had to that. I've got a really incredible talent pool on my list. 
And I exercise. I exercise pretty much every day. I used to do intense weight training, like strength training, then more endurance training and Pilates and power yoga. And now it's mostly, I surf every day that I'm in Bali, even if it's two feet. Yesterday it was two feet. It was pretty little, but I'm like, I'm getting in the water and I'm going to go and try to do something different or new in the water that I haven't done before, even though it's two foot surf. So, um, like that, you know, we'll talk more. Those are other qualities I've talked about, like consistent production in, in my other list of things. But, um, these are non-negotiable. Like I have to force myself to take a rest day from exercise because I just love exercising every day. It gets me high. It stimulates your neurotransmitters and hormones positively. It's a mood uplifter and you feel fit and strong as a result of it. So that's a huge part of my life, all three of these things. And I've had a meditation practice since, you know, almost almost 30 years now, a daily meditation practice. And so my view is that meditation is a way to check in with your higher self, get that powerful guidance, and then go about your day. So that's something that I do every morning. I have a shower, I have breakfast, and I meditate. Like that always happens every single day of my life. And it's an, again, it's a non-negotiable. And it's only 20 minutes. I usually chant with a mantra and then I do some creative visualization. I think about things that I want to bring into my life and not just think about them, I feel them. I really try to get into the feeling of what it would be like to have these things in my life. So those are all huge parts of my routine. So I'm gonna see what kind of questions you guys have all sent in. What was the first bold idea that you shared with the world that made you realize that you were in the right field? You know, it might have been even that Pachachka talk. Like, I, I felt like I was in the right field, but I think when I really felt the potential of how that could skyrocket into my world was through that talk when I just totally took a chance, had no idea how it would land, threw it out there, and it was off the charts. And I, you know, I'd, I'd shared a, like a bit before that, you know, in some groups, like a bit more sexual concepts, but that was like 1,200 people in this audience. And when they just lit up, I was like, holy shit, this is it. This is really the formula, is like putting out your absolute truth, no matter what it is, no matter how provocative you might think it is or how you might think other people will take it. And it was a massive success. <laughs> when is your next retreat that isn't sold out? Well, um, I just made the decision to hold, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep doing retreats, but I decided I am because I do love them. And so next year we're going to do more Bali retreats. So if you um, put it up on if you email us salons at kimonami.com then you'll go on our wait list because we have a wait list already but there's always cancellations etc but we're going to have the link back up on the website to register and then if you email us you'll be top well you'll be added to the list and close to the top of the list all right so next i turn on so one of the main messages that i have in my work is that sexual energy is creative energy. And so even though I'm, you know, I, how to have better blowjobs is like part of my teaching repertoire. One of my huge messages is that sexual energy is creative energy. And the more that we tap into this energy, we can harness it and channel it out into our daily lives. And so whether I'm having sex with myself or with my partner, this is something that takes place you know on a daily basis and I look at how to breathe and tune into and harvest that sexual energy and I use the word harvest very deliberately because it's all about taking that energy tapping into it and then being able to utilize it in your day-to-day -day life and that's really the essence of what I teach is how to get people tuned into that energy 
And, you know, I've had some of my most well-fucked periods when I've been a single person. And that's because, in my definition, being well-fucked isn't just about having intercourse. It's about learning how to inhabit and own your sexual energy and then channel that out into the world. And so all of my online programs, my salons, teach people how to do this. So, yes, I'm all about better sexual technique. But the big thing that most people don't even know is how powerful their sexual energy is and then how if they really inhabit it, their entire lives will be changed. And so, you know, I was, um, in the, the last time I was single, I had a routine where I would meditate, I would masturbate, and then I would write. And so I was very conscious of using that space to tune in to stay well fucked, to harvest my sexual energy and channel it out into my life. And I had some very, very productive, creative moments out of that. So even when I'm separated from my partner, like he's on another side of the world or whatever, I am still tuned into that energy. And so I have my own practices that I use, like self-pleasuring practices, the jade yoni egg practices that rev up my sexual energy. And so to me, that's a giant source of creative power and rejuvenation and so I take that and I channel that into my project so when I said I med meditate I masturbate and then I would go to a cafe and write for the next couple of hours so because I was very aware that this is energy that I can deliberately fuse and fuse into everything that I do Okay. Another one that I love is setting impossible deadlines. So the idea, like, you know, we've all heard like, you know, people often work well under pressure and that is something I guess that I, I tune into. I'm more, but for me, I think it's more of the challenge. It's like the more I feel challenged, the more excited that I am. And so if I set a seemingly impossible deadline for a project, then it gives me more impetus. I'm more like, okay, how do we get this done? Like, how do we achieve the impossible? That's more interesting to me. And so sometimes it's hard for me to plan like things far out in advance. Although I have to say like, you know, working with a larger team of people these days when it's not just me and my business, that has to be done because you have to respect other people's time and not just flying by the seat of your pants. But there is something to be said for really that idea is like, how am I going to feel more challenged in this process? All right. Um, let's see what other questions we've got. Ah, you are so beautiful. What do you think is the number one thing that makes you glow? Um, the number one thing, probably this idea of doing something new. Like right now, this is my first Instagram live, so that's new for me. And even though it's like, okay, whatever, I'm just recording a video, but there, because it's new, it's different, I feel like I'm making a connection with people. Um, I it's exciting to me and so every day I like to feel like I'm challenged in some way so whether like for me also that surfing I go out for a surf and every day my goal with every surf is to learn something new to get just a little bit better at surfing and that I think is what I live for and honestly that's what the name Anami the, it's a Sanskrit word and it means there's always another level to go there's always another level of enlightenment so you get there to an enlightened place and then you can still become more enlightened and more enlightened and so I think that's really that's why that's my name <laughs> it's like it's living by this idea of constantly growing so I, I think that's the number one now, there's all these other things I do that I think contribute to that but I think that's the number one. What time do you wake up and go to sleep and are you consistent? Um, I get up usually between four and five in the morning and go to bed between 9.30 and 10.30 generally. And is it consistent? It's pretty consistent. Like whatever part of the planet I'm on, I generally wake up. Like, uh, you know, six o'clock would be really sleeping in for me. Like I'm just, I generally, I go to bed early. I really love that pattern of early to bed, early to rise. And especially now, like when, where I am in Bali, this is a semi not as populated area and so there's not street lights I don't have a bunch of random light pollution here and I feel like the more years I've spent in Indonesia and living like this 
that my body's adapted to that. And so it's adapted more to that rhythm because here in the tropics, the sun gets, comes up at six and it goes down at six. It doesn't change. And so, my, you know, you've already got two to three hours in the evening and from say six to nine where it's, it's dark or maybe 6.30, you know. But um, so I think my body's just adapted to that rhythm and I love it. You know, I, I, I can get up at four in the morning and do a full day of work and exercise and meditation before noon. And then by noon, everything else is a bonus that happens after that. Can you talk about your path to becoming a sex educator? So for me, I always had an awareness of my sexual energy, even as a child. And so growing up, I was aware of this energy. I wouldn't say that I grew up in a particularly like liberal household where, hey, go masturbate in your room, young daughter. Like, no, it wasn't like that. But it was something that I just somehow felt I was aware of. And then when I began having sex, I felt like it was this cataclysmic experience. Like it really opened me up to new portals of awareness in myself. It was like taking a drug, except I wasn't. I was just having sex. Like I felt like I accessed new levels of consciousness. And then in my early 20s, I learned about Tantra and Taoist sexuality. And those teachings had more of a framework for my personal experiences. Because in Western culture, sex is either you know, it will kill you or get you pregnant. That's what you really learn about sex. And my, my view was that it was this spiritual opening. It was this transcendent state of consciousness and a way of self-actualizing. So I, I felt all this even at the age of as a teenager. And, and so when I learned about these other studies, I thought, okay, well, this reflects my own philosophy more, more so. And at the same time, as, as a well, since I was a teenager, exploring different healing and alternative therapies and modalities. Like I started meditating when I was 19 and got into being a vegetarian when I was 18. So I've always been interested in how do people change and how do we grow and how can I become the best version of myself? I'd read about the works of Maslow when I, I did like, I think it was my grade 11 psychology elective in high school. And Abraham Maslow, his chart of, um, what is it, like the human needs, the hierarchy of human needs, and the highest need is self, self, the highest achievement as a human is self-actualization, becoming who you really are as a person. And so that kind of fueled, I think, some of my exploration, like how do I become that best version of myself? And so all the things I've studied along the way, philosophy, transpersonal psychology, my eating, exercise, meditation, all of those things came together and sex to me was always a part of that um, formula like of things that you do for self growth and for healing and for empowerment and then that all just kind of came together so I started to do life slash business slash sex and intimacy coaching and I would you know consult with a client who would say kind of see me for business coaching and I'd say well let's talk about the rest of your life and your home life and and he's like well you know I haven't had sex with my partner for a couple of years but whatever I don't really want to talk about that I want to talk about my business goals and I'd say hey 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 wait a second like the reason why your business goals are stalled is because your home life is stalled like that's crazy what you're living with right now and so then I just realized over time, like that was my niche. It was talking about sex and intimacy because A, nobody really was in the personal growth world. No one was talking about it the way I was talking about it, which was as a holistic perspective, right? Like most sex educators out there are voicing mainstream ideas and mainstream Western science ideas about sex are wrong. And, you know, they just don't know what they don't know. And if it can't be proved in a lab, then it doesn't exist. So, you know, I've been able to, and then the more I put my work out there, the more I would see how people resonated with it. And they were just starving, starving. This, and it's like this sex oasis in the desert for healthy, positive, powerful sex and even spiritualized sex. And so that just became the main focus then, you know? And so obviously all of my other studies and interests have fed into my modalities and how I teach about sex, where there's this holistic, whole body, whole person perspective. But I've really charted my own path. Like I never went to a, a sex educator school. I often say if I did, I'd probably be broken unsuccessful because I wouldn't have gotten the knowledge that I know 
and have learned and I would have taken on a bunch of false ideas. And so, you know, I'm very, even though at times I didn't know which direction I was going and where I had no idea where it would end up, but I look back on it and all of the choices that I made, all of the things that I studied, even studying method acting in London when I was 21 years old, that has helped inform what I do as a sex educator and a speaker and a writer. So everything that I just followed my own intuition, like this feels right, this is the next right step, okay? that's the next right step, okay? I'm veering over now to the other side of the planet, but that feels like the next right step. And I'm so grateful that I just followed that, even though I have to say it was so hard at the time, not knowing what my path was. Like I felt like when I was a teenager and I was in high school, I was like very clear where I was going and what I wanted to do. And then my life took a radically different direction. And then I felt like I was starting at ground zero. I was like, I know I don't wanna go that way, but I don't know where I'm going now. Like, where am I going? And I had to just, you know, step by step piece it all together. But like I said, in retrospect, it was the most amazing self-education and everything that I did has helped to contribute in some way. Living in pirate boats off the coast of Vancouver Island, you know, when I was in my mid twenties or early twenties, like living off the grid, there's all kinds of things that they all had their place to play in my evolution. All right. Great questions, you guys. Okay, so the idea of doing something new. So I think I've actually touched on this. I've talked about how this idea of anomaly, of constant evolution, constant challenge, and even in surfing. Like every day, I wanna feel like I've grown a little bit, like I've done something different, I've challenged myself. That feels like it's a good day. If I didn't do that, it feels like it wasn't the best day. And maybe that seems like a lot of pressure to put on myself, and it probably is, but it's like, I just don't feel as good if I haven't done something that put me out of my comfort zone. In, in some way, I tried something different, I did something new, I pushed myself in some fashion. Next one is being in nature. So when I was growing up, we had a, we lived in a city and then we had a summer cabin and we used to go out to the summer cabin in the, you know, in the spring, summer, fall, every weekend we'd spend summers there. And that was out in the forest, you know, running around as kids do. And I just feel like that was quite formative for me, like having this place to go to just let nature absorb and detoxify. So living in an urban environment and then getting out of the city. And, I, you know, I wrote in this blog post that Cities were never originally meant to be lived in. They were created as places of commerce where you would come to do your shopping, buy food, buy clothes, go to the market, and then you'd go home to your, your place in the country. And I think there's really something to that. And I know that's not realistic for the way the world is today for everyone. But my thought is that the more time that we can spend in nature, nature recalibrates us in a way that nothing else does and you know it just brings us back to our true self and I remember like oh gosh this was maybe like 15 years ago or, or more but I was like you know in this sort of take charge entrepreneurial place of like really starting a new element of my business and working my ass off and getting burnt out and I remember being like like dragging myself out of the city and I just booked three days, grabbed my son and, and his little friend and ran out to an island off the coast of Vancouver and just three days out in nature. And it was miraculous. Like I felt like it just sucked by osmosis, all of the toxicity and stress out of my system and rejuvenated me. And I came back into the city, you know, for Monday and suddenly all these clients are falling into my lap and they're just coming to me and my energy feels totally recentered. So recalibration, that's what nature does. And the irony, you know, is like these days it, it becomes it's becoming like a, a thing now, like this idea of earthing where you go and you walk bare feet, barefoot on the earth to get the earth energy. Like it's this crazy novel idea that we just used to live that way as humans all the time. Or um, forest bathing, where you go out into the forest and the energy of the forest. In Japan, they have a term for it, like shin, shinuko or, or something like that. 
where you go out and it, it nourishes you. Or even now to get pure oxygen, you can go to oxygen chambers and breathe pure oxygen. And they found that pure oxygen has the effect of, of curing everything from cancer to Lyme disease, among other, like especially autoimmune issues. It's huge for that because you're oxygenating your system. So you pay money to go breathe pure oxygen that we probably used to have in our atmosphere, but just don't anymore because it's more polluted. So it's just amusing to me that now these things are becoming like such a novelty, but I spend as much time as I can in nature. Like most of my time in Bali, where I live in Bali, I feel like I'm pretty much in nature and I'm in the ocean every single day. So I've got jungle around me and I've got ocean, you know, and I'm just, I'm very happy with that. I feel like that's a big part of my reality and, and who I am. So, and following on that is the idea of, wait, how many have I done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we'll take some questions. Um, would you say that certain positions in sex bring about more spiritual awakening slash connection? I'd say really listen to your body and the more that you're aware of that, your body will guide you. Like ultimately, we want sex to be this dance, this intuitive dance between you and your partner, you and yourself listening to what you need and you want. So I'll give you an example. Like there's times when I am like, I feel like I'm stuck and I can't quite figure out how to break myself emotionally, how to crack open. Like, you know, if you're feeling stuck, but you know, underneath that is something that needs to come out doggy style getting fucked hard and slammed up against the headboard and pounded getting the shit pounded it literally pounds the shit out of you pounds the shit out of your head and out of your body and clears your whole energy field so that you know different strokes for different m moments and um i'd say that you know having eye contact is definitely a more any position where you're face to face is going to be more intimate and more like maybe heart opening in a different way right where you don't need that more aggressive approach which can be very effective and it's more about the two of you just connecting and eye contact is i feel like eye contact is its own sexual position where people so rarely do it and the habit is to look away or you know be nestled in each other's necks and and not fully engaged so I think that just adding eye contact into any sexual position where you're face to face is a huge next level. Will you expand on why you don't drink or do any drugs? Does this include cannabis? Um, I <laughs> had a pretty big period of exploration in my youth, like I'd say in my late teenage years and early what, maybe 20, 21, where I did a lot of different things. I was living in London. I was like part of the whole rave culture. So you can imagine what things were consumed there. Um, and, that, but I, but I was also searching, like I was searching for my spiritual path. Like I was reading these books on shamanism and energy work. And, and my goal was actually to come back to Canada and work with this native American teacher and shaman. And then in that process, I discovered the spiritual path that I have now. And I realized like when I found that, that was actually what all those other pursuits were about for me. And that I could get to higher, higher, much higher states of consciousness through my spiritual path, through meditation, through chanting, through the use of mantra, through what I call spiritual exercises than I could with any substance. And so as soon as I found that path, the desire for all those things just dropped. And I honestly, I haven't used them since. And yeah, that includes cannabis. Like I know that there's a lot of now emerging evidence about the different medicinal uses of marijuana and you know, to each, to each their own. And, and certainly like I'm a big fan of herbs for in terms of treating things. Like I don't use allopathic or pharmaceutical medicine, prescription medicine ever. And I, um, believe in herbal medicine and I study I have been studying herbs and plants since like for the last 27 years 28 years actually and so that's a, that's my medicine cabinet is pr pr prevention okay is probably like 90% of my medicine cabinet and leading a healthy lifestyle as I said being meticulous about my diet exercise meditation but then 
herbal medicine. I use all natural treatments for things. Like I'm even getting into crystal medicine these days. And homeopathy has always been a big treatment for me. So um, I do support herbs, but I guess I support them as a acute treatment. And I guess when I see sometimes chronic use of certain substances, I don't really support that. Like for me personally, I believe that if you use something, it's to address an acute problem and then you, you deal with that and then you move through it. Like herbs weren't meant to be taken constantly. You go in, you figure out what you want to deal with. Like so let's say you're feeling low and you maybe your adrenals are burnt out. Okay, so some withania, some ashwagandha, some you know other herbs that would help boost that up. And then you take that for two months and then you release it rather than you know, taking it ongoing. So I believe in being really independent and I believe in relying on my own power. So the more that I can do that and I'm not reliant on another substance or a drug or whatever, that, you know, the power is in me. And that's, again, one of the biggest messages of my work is that the power is in you. And so even though I'm a teacher and a guide, I'm guiding you into yourself is what I'm actually doing. Like, I don't want people to be reliant on me or on substances or anything else. I want them to be reliant on themselves. And that can be a long journey. I've been on this journey now for 31 years. So I, like, I mean, when I say that, I mean a conscious journey of wellness and, and evolution and wanting to become a better person and being very d deliberate about that. So that's how, I, that's how I look at it. And you know, everyone's at their own stage. I don't have judgment about wherever people are at. I just know what's worked for me, what my process has been, and my philosophy on it. So you asked, I'm answering. How do you deal with trauma or problems that have appeared in your life? Well, number one, I deal with them. Meaning, like, ever since, you know, I've, when I say, like, 16 is I wanted my parents, like, I started seeing a therapist when I was 16 because I had some issues coming up and my parents couldn't really deal with them. And they took me to see a psychologist and it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because I had this kind of objective mentor person to talk to. And she was maybe a rarity, like, she kind of took a liking to me and maybe mentored me in, in some ways, you know, that maybe were different than the average relationship. But, um, you know, that was invaluable to me. And I feel like that kind of internal examination started really early for me. And then I started to look at where I had, say, traumas growing up and then doing different types of therapy, different healing, healing modalities, which have been like a whole host of things over the years. But I'll just say that I fully, like, summarize that by saying that dealing with things period so whether that whatever modalities that you choose um, that you are consciously I believe that not everything lives in the body and so if you've had a trauma you've had a negative experience those things are lodged in your tissues and they do not get discharged until you consciously hunt your demons find them and exorcise them so you know, in my salons, I talk a lot about, more about specifically things that I re recommend for that. But even on my YouTube channel and the exercises I give you sexually, there's a great starting place. Even doing sexual work and self-exploration, self-pleasuring, the breathing exercises that I teach, all of those things help to move energy in your body, which is a great technique. All right. Um, taking total time off. So admittedly, this is probably the area I need more work on because I have not, because I, I mean, look, I live a lifestyle that's very work slash play, right? I get up, I go surfing every day, I get my vitamin D, I eat, you know what I mean? Like I have a great work-life balance and so it's not always so clear to me that I should take like three weeks of no work at all. But that's my goal is to do that this year, is to take one, like a two month pretty much a sabbatical, like coming to the end of the year, maybe December, January. So I read this study years ago where they looked at self-employed people and how their productivity was and the amount of vacation time that they took. And interestingly, what they found is the people who took more vacation time made more money. So this whole idea of 
nourishing yourself, feeding yourself, getting your, your time that you're completely doing something else, you bring back, and I mentioned this before with when I said going out for the weekend into nature, different slack, but same kind of idea, is when you fill yourself up, then you come back and you're a machine. I'm not, well, not a machine. you're like your power house. You've got all this energy and focus and drive thought I heard a monkey. I have to be very aware. <laughs> I think it's too late. Next, maybe next Instagram live, they'll come. Um, uh, so, you know, these days I go out on surf boats where I can turn off my phone and not look at the internet, not look at the phone, just be off. So I'm off the grid. I'm away from work at least for a few days at a time. And I need to get, like I said, get better, like hold me to it, please. Um, and even if it's a day, like sometimes when I'd be in LA and I'd go for a surf, like we drive down to like San Clemente and go surfing, I just have the phone off for the day. I'd have it on airplane mode and I wouldn't um, look at it all day. And even that felt like a vacation, you know, like going surfing all day, being with my friends, being on the beach but then not looking at the phone, just making myself not look at it. So there's little things that you can do to get time off and just shut off, but even a day, like a, and then like make it clear, like this day, I don't look at emails, I don't check my phone, I'm not gonna even think about work. And the best way to do that is immerse yourself in something else, like be with other people, go do an activity that you love to do, and then just leave it behind. And I promise that you will come back recharged. And the longer you can do it for, the more recharged that you'll get. So the next item was the concept of pleasure and flow, getting in the zone. So there's a lot of different ways, like, you know, that whole idea that was so popular years back of getting into the zone. So you're in some kind of activity and you're immersed in it and you're so deeply engaged that you get into this zone where everything seems to like work perfectly. You're in this flow. And I get that when I go surfing, like when I'm just so focused and then it's just like every wave, I feel like I don't always get it, but maybe a lot. Um, Every wave I feel like I catch perfectly, I you know paddle back perfectly, I'm just in this divine rhythm. And so some activity that tends to bring that to you, I know people get it in rock climbing or in different sports, gardening, art, painting, exercise, some creative flow, wherever you get it, I feel like if you could do something daily that brings you into that space, that flow then spills over into the rest of your life. So I remember last year, I'd come back from Indonesia and I'd been here for about three months and surfing every day, came back to LA and I had this sense of being in total flow, like things would happen and I would just like flow with it, roll with it, wouldn't like, you know, wouldn't be affected and I felt like it was this, and knowing what to do next really easily, where I feel like in the surfing situation, like okay, this wave I'm gonna catch, this is where I'm gonna catch it, this is how I'm gonna ride it, but it's all intuitive, it's all just happening. And that energy I feel like then carries over into the rest of your life. So whatever activity you can do, as I'm looking at the waves right now, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Um, whatever you can do that gives that to you will infuse into other parts of your life. Surfing, sex is another one. I already talked about sex, but that's another, another area for sure. Okay, next question. I would love to introduce your work to my daughter. What age is appropriate to start? She is 15 and I want her to have a positive outlook on sexuality. I mean, any age, like I think, you know, if you look at sex education in the Netherlands, there's some great videos on YouTube about that where they start them like kindergarten, grade one, and it's not just, you must use a condom. I mean, what, what do they know about that? It's talking about their bodies. It's talking about the healthiness of self-pleasuring and self-exploration. So I think any age is like the right age to start talking openly about sex. And that's where it starts. Like we're modeling behavior to our children. And I always encourage people to model and be open about the sexual relationship that they have as parents. It doesn't mean that there's gonna be a blowjob, you know, at the dinner table, but there can be sexual affection. There can be like a little mini makeout, you know, in the hallway or on the couch, like mini. <laughs> but but you want them to know that you're having sex. It's safety. It actually creates safety for your children to know that their parents are really into each other. We think people think 
that they can pr have this lie that they're together as a couple, but that they're not really together, that they've, they're not having sex or they're having problems and that their kids don't know. Oh, we're going to stay together for the kids. Oh, that's fucking bullshit. Like your kids know. And what they actually know is that you're living a lie. So what you're teaching them is how to lie to the world and have a secret reality in private. So it's way better that they know well on that note if you're not you know fi you know if you're not getting along like fix it or or split up but um oh, that's a whole other topic but like that's the short version of it otherwise you know let them know that you're into each other it's really good for them to know so in terms of my work go for it like i've had women do my salons and then kind of watch certain videos with their daughters like you could look through it and see what you're comfortable with sharing like the um, breast massage practices that I teach in the salons have been taught to teenage girls so you can you know message me but if you are pretty much anything I mean unless you think it's just way too out there but look my work is all about the spiritual and the sexual how to use your sexual energy in a spiritual powerful way a conscious way so not just having random sex or casual sex that's never my message even though I might seem kind of provocative and out there I never say that I never say go fuck a bunch of people at random and have casual sex it's not my message my message is about having casual or <laughs> conscious powerful you know um, creative harnessed sex are you ever too old to break habits and live life to the fullest? Absolutely not. So I've got scores of menopausal women in my work who have started and they are having their first orgasms, they're gushing wet, they're having you know, or their first vaginal orgasms. Maybe they've had other clitoral orgasms before, but they're having cervical orgasms and G-spot orgasms and all of these amazing experiences. And so I had, here's another great example. At my Bali retreat a few years ago, I had a gentleman come, a single man, and he was 72 years old. He, his wife had died early, like a year ago, and he had been married to her for like, like six, no, what's the math? It's like 50, 50, 55 years or something like that. And he had already been studying that year Tantra and he wanted to know how to become an even better lover so that he could meet his next partner and have an amazing high level tantric style relationship with her. He was 72. So, and I've had, I've had actually other 72 year old guys do my men's course and like same thing. They're like, how can I separate orgasm from ejaculation? This woman says here, I was 42 when I first gushed. Yay! See, it's there for everyone. And even if you're starting late, there's nothing, nothing that impedes you from getting to all these places. I don't know if you've heard my orgasmic guarantee, but I guarantee that every single woman can have every single kind of orgasm. Every single woman has a high libido. Every single woman can squirt, ejaculate across the room. They just need to unblock whatever is in the way. And so that's what my work is all about, is how to open to yourself Get rid of the things that are stopping you and claim your true power because, I, as I said, I guarantee every woman can do this. Can you use sex as a means to figure out your true path in life? And if yes, how? Absolutely you can. So my view is that your sexual energy, it contains your reproductive blueprint. So this is the energy, the essence of who you are as an individual. This is your true self. So the more that you inhabit your sexual energy, you just naturally begin to go more in the direction of your true dharma. Dharma is a beautiful Sanskrit word that means your gifts that you give to the world. So as you do this, you naturally become in touch with yourself. So when I, like back in the day, I said when I used to do more like life slash business and sex coaching, a woman came to me and she wanted to do a, um, wait, thank you, I've already considered I'm already considered an out there mom, LOL, totally introducing you to my daughter. Awesome to hear. Um, so she came to me and she wanted to change jobs. And most people would be like, she, did, she was like working a bureaucratic job she didn't really like. Most people would say, oh, just, you know, here, like, let's do this career assessment and this personality assessment and see where your strengths are. And I was like, no, actually, I just want you to go home and fuck yourself every day for the next three weeks. I want you to start a self-pleasuring practice. I want you to breathe the way that I'm telling you to, and then we'll talk. 
So she does that, and she's totally different, like different energy, newly inspired about the world. And then within a couple of months, she quits this job, this government job, cushy job that she had, goes to Thailand to do this yoga teacher training, just out of the blue, right? She's just like, her fucking vagina told her to do it, right? So she starts waking up her sexual energy, waking up that creative, erotic blueprint, her true dharma, and it just happens, right? I didn't, we didn't, we, we talked a little bit about things she might like to do, but she really did it herself. Her vagina did it, her sexual energy did it. Okay, the last two things are, We've got 10 more minutes here, so I'm gonna get through these. Consistent production. So Chuck Close, the artist said, one of my favorite quotes, inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. So this idea that you need to wait for the muse or be inspired to do something, no, that's not how productive people work. <laughs> we just show up and sit down and make it happen. And look, maybe like I said, I have things that I will, will hope to help open up my creativity, like meditation, maybe exercising, going for a surf, and then I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm in a good zone, I'm gonna sit down. But it's really about just showing up and doing the work. And so you develop this flow with your own creativity, this relationship with your own creativity, your own muse, where you show up and you fuck her every day. And so she comes and she comes and she comes again. The last point, being of service. So a motto that I like to live by is always leave a person or a place better than you found them. And this is idea, hang on, can men do that to fuck themselves to open themselves up? Yes, consciously. Check out my YouTube channel, Sexual Mastery for Men playlist, and you can do that too. Um, always leave a person or a place better than you found them. And so you always, I'm always hoping to uplift. So every conversation that I have, even if it's with like a vendor at the shop, is like to say something funny or say something nice to just uplift their day and leave them with something positive. With um, uh, people in my life, like I buy presents for people all the time. I don't even, like I kind of forget about birthdays and Christmases because I don't really care. Like I would rather buy people, I'm like, oh, this is an amazing book for this person. I know they would love this. So this is something so-and-so would really need or love and I just buy it and give it to them. Or, you know, and another principle I really like is the idea of doing something secretly. So every day, think of something that you can do that will help somebody else but without them knowing about it so an example would be let's say you're walking down the street and you see somebody's parking meter expired and so you put some money into the meter so they're never gonna know they won't even know that they got saved from a ticket they won't know it was you but you've done something so you're always putting good contributions into the karma bank and they come back like I fully believe in karma and that, that that's a big motivating factor in really conducting yourself with integrity and generosity of spirit is that a it feels really good <laughs> and b that you know that comes back to you in your life in your world in whatever fashion and i guess the other point to that is giving your gifts to the world. This idea of dharma is really connecting to your gifts. And honestly, the more you connect to your sexual energy, the more you connect to your gifts in the world. And so do that, do like I've got tons of free videos on YouTube that usually have some tips and exercises in them. There is, I've got free video series connected to all of my salons. So if you go to my Sexual Savant Salons pages, our page on my website, then there's the links for all the salons, like Well Fucked Woman, Vaginal Kung Fu, Sexual Mastery for Men, Coming Together for Couples. And all of those have a free three-part video series attached to them. Like a preview for the salon, but the video series is full of information and exercises for you to do. So if you sign up for those video series, you get these exercises that you can work on tonight. <laughs> so for men, you can work on stamina. For women, you can explore your vagina more deeply. So I highly suggest that you check those out and sign up for them. Yes, integrity and generosity of spirit. They're actually, I have one tattoo on my body and it says integrity in another language, but that's like, that's what I aim to live by and not perfect, probably I am, but like, um, but that's my goal, right? And the more that you're like inhabiting that energy, you do, you stay there more and more and more. So 
Let's see. That's to you. I see. Okay. Um, anyway, thank you everyone for coming to my little Instagram party. I really enjoyed this and I really love this live aspect of connecting to you and being, you know, in this interaction. Um, so, you know, I guess the big, like the lasting point here like, that I think the theme of all this is, or part of it, is this idea of connecting to your sexual energy and letting that be a guide and a means of transformation in your life and self-actualization amongst all of these other things that, that you know, I've mentioned. And as I said, there's free video series that you can check out. My How to Be a Well-Fucked Woman Salon is starting at the end of July. And so if there's a link in the bio on this picture um, that that's in my Instagram feed with to that salon, the free video series, and then that'll open up at the end of the month. And um, yeah, and then that's all about how to be well fucked and not give a fuck. So I'm just gonna read some of these. Glad I could be here and listen to you share. Heaps of gratitude to you. Thanks for being this tribe. Um, we've got like four minutes to go. Somebody was asking if I could talk more about crystal healing, and I'll quickly go into that. Um, so, I crystals are meant to have a a healing vibration with them, and a particular set of qualities that would help you to reconnect to your higher self. And by doing so, okay, here's my juice delivery. So, <laughs> welcome to my morning. <laughs> Selamat pagi. Apa itu? Okay. Taruh dalam dalam kulkas dan tunggu sedikit saya bercerita dalam orang. Mau istirahat untuk dua minit? Yeah, mau lihat. Okay, so two minutes. Anyway, so I created a series of crystal elixirs. I, I can speak Indonesian, by the way. Um, crystal elixirs for people to take that would help with healing ailments. And so I made these elixirs myself right here on my balcony in Bali. And I had the most incredible experience. It was on the full moon last year. I locked the doors. I didn't let anybody in, even the juice person. And just... Um, focused on taking these energies of the crystals and then infusing them into water. And then I bottled these and made these into my Anami crystal elixirs. And so I had the most amazing experience channeling and connecting with the energies of these crystals. And I've since taken them myself. They've been life changing. It's some of the most powerful medicine I've ever experienced. I took the one, I've taken several, maybe almost all of them, but there was one called Muse that I've made, which is all about connecting to your voice and your creativity. And I couldn't believe it. It was so powerful. I was channeling ideas that I've like, I feel like I'm a pretty creative person, it was insane. Like I had stuff come into my vision and my, it was when we were putting the store together, my online store, Anami Alchemia, and I had so much coming to me. And then I took it for a second round and then it was about communication in my relationship. And I, I again, I feel like I'm a pretty expressive person, but with my partner, I, I realized there was where places where I was holding back. And believe it or not but like there were just things that I, I'd maybe like oh I, I don't I'm I don't that doesn't bother me or you know something and suddenly all this stuff is spilling out of me like calling him out on stuff and confronting him about stuff and it was amazing like I was just so radical so do check out the crystal elixirs they're extremely powerful and you know I was a person who wasn't like oh like crystal medicine until I really used it so thank you so much for being here. I really, really loved this. And I've loved, I couldn't get to all of your questions. I see there's amazing ones, but come back in a couple of weeks and we will return. So lots of love to all of you. I'm going to leave you with my view before we go. It's still flat out there, but I'm going to probably go out anyway and just pick off what I can. So thank you so much. I loved this. I loved it. I loved it. And see you next time. Bye.